Well, hello, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. Today, how to breed plecos. The simple way, the easy way, the Michael's Fish Room way. So, fishy folks, we're looking at my L144 pleco tank. It is a 20 long with a lot of driftwood and a lot of caves. And I use these uh, plant watering spikes for caves in my fish room. I find them the most cost effective. I'll put a link in the description below from Amazon. I also have some upside down pots or pots that I had uh, uh, drilled a hole in like that pot in the back right there that we can't see, it's a cave. Um, I put them in there before I had a lot of the uh, these uh, breeding caves, if you will. Um, and I just left them in there because there's algae that grows on there and the little babies, um, you know, feed off it. So this tank is quite messy. It doesn't matter how often I clean it. I feed the bejesus out of it. And uh, we have a ton of snails and we have a ton of detritus. And I don't really care. You can see I have a little label, six kelp wafers. That's so when I go away, uh, my son has an idea of what to feed this tank. Um, you'll see them on many other tanks as well. Uh, if there's something special that I don't think he's gonna figure out on his own, I try to write it down to make it easy. So there's about, I don't know, 40 or 45 of these L144 babies. They've grown quite a bit since I got back from Japan. And uh, oh, there's also three ginormous canister filters in here that all three need to be cleaned pretty much the second I put them in there because of what they suck up. Uh, it's time to clean that big one. I'll probably do that today, but I don't want to cloud the water too much. As far as water changes, it's on the auto water change system. It gets a lot of water change because of the filth that the plecos cause because of the overfeeding. You can see I have a big pipe from the auto water change system. Obviously that doesn't go full blast, um, but that's what that's how much water I change in here. You know, for 10 minutes, it, it, this one probably gets almost 50%. I also do have a heater in here to get the babies to grow faster. Um, as far as breeding goes, uh, you know, obviously a male and a female. The female goes in and lays the eggs. The man goes in and fertilizes them and he does all the work as far as guarding them and so on and so forth. So the way to tell a male bristle nose from a female bristle nose is if you look here at this male, you can see the bristles. More than likely that is a male. Um, I do have one with bigger bristles. Oh, there he is. Right there, you can see how big those bristles are. That's definitely a boy. Um, if there are no bristles, it's definitely a girl. But sometimes you get a female, you know how sometimes you get a female with a mustache? Yeah, same thing here, female with a mustache. Uh, you can see all the, the uh, snails. I did have a concern that snails would eat the eggs, but I was schooled by Mr. Mike from Mile High Plecos, Mikey. He said, nah, don't worry about it. And I didn't. And when I got back from Japan, I had a lot of Plucko babies. So, and they're pretty cute. They're almost big enough to sell actually. And the reason why they grow so fast is what I feed them. And that's what's most important when it comes to breeding any fish really, but especially Plecos. Uh, some people ask me, why do I have forks in my tank? And I always said I was to add iron for the plants, but the truth is I'm lazy. I drop a cucumber or a zucchini in there on a fork and then I just leave them in there. So. I also feed this tank quite a bit of rapashi, which is why it's a little cloudy, because rapashi kind of clouds the water sometimes. Um, I feed a morning wood <laughs> and a bottom scratcher, <coughs> usually mixed with um, spawn and grow or community. And I do that because I put it in a lot of different tanks so everybody can eat it. Um, all right, what else do we need to breed plecos? Clean water, good food, a boy and a girl, and a cave, and some Barry White. All right, fishy folks, let's talk about feeding. I'm gonna drop some cucumber in there, and we can take a look and see what happens, all right? Why don't you uh, stand by? All right, fishy folks, I dropped cucumber in the tank, and within a minute, the babies started devouring this piece of cucumber. And we got a mama on this piece and a baby on the other side. Looks like she might be hiding. I thought she was gonna go for the cucumber, but they just love it. So all I do is I buy a cucumber, I peel it, I put it on a fork and I drop it in the tank. I don't blanch it, I don't do anything else. 
Actually, I wash it first, obviously. After I peel it, I wash it, which is kind of silly, but it's a force of habit, so what can I say? I put cucumber in most of my tanks with plecos. Uh, you can see down here in the green dragon tank, they haven't, oh yeah, he did start on it. Look, you can see him right there. Just eating it, it's delicious, it's healthy, yum yum. And then uh, over here in the baby bristle nose tank, there is a baby bristle nose, which it's not focusing. There we go. And then over here, down here is something special, which I will show you later, but let's, uh, let's move over here. I did turn this light off for better filming for the tank behind me. Let me fix that so we can actually see what's going on. Here's, oh, hey, brightness. Here's the uh, baby red bristle nose, super red bristle nose. They haven't started eating it yet. You can see there's one on the filter. He's just eating that. It's like, mmm, delicious. <clears throat> Over here we have the baby calicos, not so baby anymore. These will be ready for sale as well soon. Um, I'm considering just saving the colony and getting them to breed before I start selling, but I'm sure I can be talked into selling them, so. All right, fishy folks, that's one of the things we feed the plecos. Hey, here's a big gibiceps pleco. So uh, let's talk about plecos, shall we? Uh, actually, I gotta change camera angle, so stand by. All right, fishy folks, this is a dirty pleco tank, but it's a new pleco tank. You can see a self in spotted pleco on the wall. There's also a royal pleco, I believe an L027. Royal Pleco, there's a couple of really small blue phantoms and an orange seam Pleco in here. As well as my L333 King Tiger Pleco, which I moved out of Chewy's tank into this sort of grow out tank. <clears throat> uh, these are Plecos I'm gonna be bringing to the Keystone class for sale. So if you're interested in Plecos, especially some more rare Plecos that you don't see every day, if you want to buy them pre-sale, please let me know and uh, we'll work something out. You can email me at michaelsfishroom.com. That's a joke. You can check out michaelsfishroom.com for guppies or you can email me at michaelsfishroom at gmail.com. Uh, or just come to the uh, Keystone Clash and see what I have available while I'm there. I'll be in the vendor room Saturday morning, Saturday and all day and Sunday morning. And I'm going to have a little helper with me, so that should be pretty fun. Uh, this tank basically has some driftwood in it, and I dropped a poop ton of rapashi in it yesterday. Most of it's gone. Um, I did drop some algae wafers in here, kelp wafers in here from North Finn uh, the first day they were here, and I didn't eat that. So I'm going to probably vacuum this tank out, change some water uh, manually. I know. I know. And, uh, but basically I want to fatten these guys up. The blue phantoms came in really small. The list said they were one and a half to two inches. If they're an inch, I'd be surprised that they're babies. They're like the size of the calicos I showed you before, so. But these guys will be for sale at the Keystone Clash. And uh, if you want them, if you want me to ship them for some reason, you decide you want them and you're not going to the Keystone class, shoot me an email and I'll give you some prices, uh, how much they are shipped and stuff. So, all right, fishy folks, hope everyone has a great Sunday fun day and uh, don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com. And while you're at it, check out keystoneclash.com and you might as well check out King and Queen of Cichlids, their Facebook page. And how about my buddy Graham over on the other side of the pond, Aquarium Adventures. He does discus and all kinds of stuff. He's goofy and he looks like Shrek and I like him a lot. So check him out. See ya. It's for the water as far as ever, when it comes to breeding plecos, you really only need one male and one female. Um, you need, you just basically need one male and as many females as you want. Uh, they're sort of playboys. They just go and do what they need to do. And um, yeah, as far as uh, breeding, one male, one female, just like any other fish will work. You could have more, you could have less. You can't have less, that was silly. 
I'm gonna drop some cucumber, cucumber, 